Okay, so here's my explanation for what you guys just saw with the batteries. So you had zinc, you had copper. So if you look at reduction potentials and you look at the tables, they always show the reactions in the manner of what would get reduced. So zinc, two plus ion taking two electrons going to the zinc solid has a negative reduction potential of negative 0.76 volts. That means that the reaction going in that direction isn't likely to happen. But it means the oxidation reaction would have a positive 0.76 volts. Let's see what the other thing would happen then. So copper, two plus, taking on two electrons, going to the solid, has a reduction potential of a positive 0.34 volts. Ah, that is actually electrochemically likely to happen. So if you look at your reaction as being your potential for the cell being the reduction reaction minus the oxidation, oh, well, copper sort of wants to get reduced. So a 0.34 volts minus a negative 0.76 volts would tell you that the potential for this cell would be 1.10 volts. That's really good. So that's not what you saw when we stuck the wire and the screw in and completed the loop. We got less than that. Well, let's explain what we would have needed to get the 1.1, and then you'll see why the citrus battery is less efficient. Okay, let me take this off for a second and find something else. So, this is a galvanic setup. So, in order to make it work, here's your setup. So, you're going to need zinc in a solution, ideally with zinc ions and some negative ions to balance, copper in a copper solution um, with some negative ions to balance, and then a salt bridge to keep the two things separate. Because if these, all, all this stuff happens in the same pot, you're going to get direct electron transfer and you're going to see heat, but you're not going to see in the, any electrons transferred from side to side. Okay, now wait a minute here. Which side's losing the electrons? It's the zinc. Loss of electrons is oxidation. This is my anode here. This makes this my cathode, because that's my reduction side. Okay, cool. So if we set this up so we get our 1.1 volts, zinc metal in a zinc ion solution with some negative ion to balance, something that wouldn't precipitate the zinc, copper metal in a copper containing solution with negative ions to balance that wouldn't precipitate the copper, so all nitrates are soluble, that's a good one, a salt bridge. Oh, so the negative ion is going to go to the anode side um, to balance out the positive zinc that's going into solution. And the potassium, your positive ion in the salt bridge, will go to the side that's losing the positive ion out of solution. Makes sense. Oh, and here are my electrons completing the circuit. So electrons going from anode to cathode. Um, so Loss of electrons, oxidation, going around, going to this metal. So my zinc screw, if I left it in there long enough, would actually lose mass. And my copper wire that's been inserted into the lemon would actually gain mass if we left it go long enough. That's really cool. Well, we didn't see that kind of voltage. So what was different? Well, hopefully you're seeing one of two things here right off the bat that would make this difference. Okay, so in order to make this work, here's the lemon setup. So you had a copper wire going into the citrus and you had a zinc screw going into the citrus. So they're going into the same pot. So one setup that's automatically different is you don't have a salt bridge to keep them separate. And you need that because some of this reaction then is they're all going to be kind of commingling together. And you're going to, instead of getting some of these 
uh, some of the reaction going in the loop like you want it to, it's going to be going directly towards each other. So that's one problem. Um, but you do have, with citrus, part of the reason why it's got that strong, you know, that lip puckering sensation when it hits your mouth, is that you've got all these different ions. You've got acid, so H+, plus. you've got K+, plus. you've got sodium, and that's all in the citrus. You've also got these negative ions. So you've got citrate, for example, which is actually not a bad choice for a negative anion because that's generally going to be soluble. The problem is being also that when you look, you're going to need the metal in a vat with the metal cation that it belongs with. It's not as big of a problem with the zinc because zinc just goes to zinc 2 plus and kind of floats away. That's not so big of a problem, and you're going to get the negative ion to match with it. The real problem comes with the copper is because you need copper 2 plus to accept those electrons to then plate that wire. <coughs> Pardon me. You're going to have minuscule amounts of copper in a lemon, but nowhere nearly enough to keep this going. So between the lack of a salt bridge to keep these reactions separate and the fact of unless if there's more copper in a lemon or a lime than we're aware of, you don't have enough to keep this going. So we saw 1.1 volts possible, and at a max, we were getting 0.3. And you're going to run out of potential really quick because without any copper to come in here to accept those electrons, you're going to run into difficulty pretty quickly. But you at least have enough juice to get started and have some electrons flow. So, yeah, you're going to lose significant amount of voltage, but you've got enough of it set up where it actually works enough to begin with. So that citrus battery that you did on day one of the year to kind of was an icebreaker to get you thinking is a galvanic cell. Zinc is oxidized, there's your anode. Copper is reduced, there's your cathode.